Hello, darlings. I have a new setup. What do you think? Um, I think that I put it way too high because you can't even see it in screen. Some of the pictures are cut off, so that's good. Uh, it's the thought that counts, I guess. Welcome to my channel. My name is Lauren. I am a former U Sport rugby player, and I'm currently your sport talking big sister, bringing you the stories of sport in Canada. So in this video, we are gonna talk about the changes and regulations for U Sports scholarships, how they give them out, who they give them to. We're gonna break it into two videos. This video is gonna focus on the change in grade requirements in order to give out scholarships. And the next one, we'll talk about how they've tried to even out funding between the men's and the women's programs. So how it used to work for universities recruiting new incoming athletes is that in order to offer them any kind of funding, so a scholarship, a bursary, money for housing, that student had to have at least an 80% average coming out of high school. Otherwise, the athletic department was not allowed to give them money. They've changed that. So now the rule is as long as the student can get into the university, as long as they've been accepted into their program, they can be given an AFA, so a financial award of some sort. From now on, I'm just gonna call it scholarships because it's just easier to understand, but like U Sport calls them AFAs. The other thing that's changed is the requirement once you're in. Prior to now, whether you were a first, second, third, or fourth year student, in order to remain eligible to play, so be allowed to be on the field, allowed to be on the court, wearing your jersey, you had to have at least a 60% average in your courses in university, okay? So averages out to go to C. Now they've changed the requirement for first year students where even if you do drop below a 60% or a C average, you can still play. So the youth board president, when they announced this news about changing the requirements, came out and said that the reason that they're doing it is because they want to make athletic scholarships more accessible to certain parts of the population that are underprivileged, don't have the same opportunities. And this makes total sense to me because not every kid coming out of high school has the same ability to focus on school. Sometimes kids have jobs, part-time jobs while they're in school. And especially if you're on a team and you have to drive to games and tournaments and you finish your school day later than most other people. So you can't take the bus and then you have to have a car and you have to be able to pay for that car somehow. So a lot of kids that don't have the same support end up having to work a job. And when you have a job and a sport and high school, you have to give energy to each of those things and not always, but a lot of the time your academics will suffer as a result of that. Whereas like if you were given the opportunity to not have to worry about working and just focusing on sport, your grades could be higher. And so I think what they're trying to do with this is to say, okay, well, you know, if you have a 70 or a 75 or a 65, we will still give you that scholarship. And then once you're in university, hopefully once you have more academic supports, you'll be able to produce higher grades. So they're wanting to open it up to the part of the population that it's harder to achieve an 80% coming out of high school because of how much they have on their plate, which I think is good. The part that confuses me about this is how you would get into the program in the first place. So universities in Canada, by and large, okay, the overwhelming majority of schools that are a part of U-Sport have a basic entry average of 80%, okay? There's like a very small number of schools that'll let you into their school with less than an 80. Brock is one of them. I think their entry average is a 70. University of Lethbridge, you have to have at least a 65. Windsor is a 70. University of New Brunswick will let you in with a 65 if you are an out of province student. So are there places you can go? Yes. We, are, can you go to most places if you have less than an 80? No. Because it's a very small number of universities that could act, that will admit a, uh, an applicant who has less than an 80% average, I don't know what that's going to mean for those schools because if they want to access the benefit of being able to recruit more students because their grade requirements for athletic scholarships are lower, they have to lower their admission requirements. Like universities don't like to lower their admission requirements because... The way universities are ranked in Canada, like if you go on like McLean's or whatever, is based on their results, right? So if you let, if you are like letting in students with lower grades out of high school, then presumably their results once those students are in school could be lower, meaning that the university would have, it would, it would like be damaging to their reputation essentially because their academics like wouldn't be as strong, their results wouldn't be as strong. So I don't think they're gonna wanna do that. But then on the flip side, if they don't do that, and in the, and the school, you know, in their, another school in their division does do it. Now that school is going to have way more of a recruiting advantage. So I feel like that's going to put pressure on universities to lower their admissions, but do they only lower them for athletes? Is that fair to the average person? 
Um, this has been an issue in the States for years. One kind of more recent one has been with the Ivy League. So there was a study in 2021 that looked at admissions for students to Harvard. Harvard, when you apply, they rank their applicants on a scale from one to six. Okay, so they take into consideration, obviously, your grades, but then also your volunteering and your work experience, blah, 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 extracurriculars, this, that, and the third. Um, and then they rank you again from one to six. So what this study found is that for students who apply that rank at a four, if they're an athlete, they have a 70% chance of getting in. And if they are a non-athlete with a four out of six score, they have a 0 0.076 chance of getting in, which is significantly lower and definitely not fair. And, and similar for students that scored like a six out of six. So for six out of six students, if you're an athlete, you have an 83% chance of getting into Harvard. If you are a six out of six student, and you are not an athlete, you have a 16% chance of getting into Harvard. Very disproportionate. So you put the university in a position of either like alienating the average student and making it unfair so that they can let in athletes, or you don't get to have the benefit of more people to recruit from because you can't accept kids that have lower than 80%. Reason number two, why they made it easier for students to access scholarships with lower grades out of high school is because they want to increase their talent pool and make themselves more competitive with the states. If your requirements are lower for a student to receive a scholarship, you have a lot more students to pick from. So you have a larger recruiting pool and in theory, you could have a lot stronger of a team. And the other reason is we lose in Canada a lot of athletes to the States, especially the best ones. Like it's kind of a known thing that if you are the best or one of the best in Canada, the best in your province at your sport, more than likely the States is going to scoop you up and you're going to end up playing in the NCAA. And so their hope with this is that if they can offer more people scholarships because the requirements are lower, then hopefully that will entice them to stay here. And then hopefully one day, again, our teams will be stronger because we'll be retaining more of those top players. And to be clear, I think it's great that they're doing this from an athletic development perspective, because I really do think that increasing the amount of people you can pull from is gonna mean your team is gonna be better. And when you're putting out a better product, it makes it a lot easier to get media deals, network coverage, advertisements. It's easier to sell tickets. You just you grow your fan base, right? Like the better your product is, the more of a following you're gonna have. Um, and so I think for that reason, it's great. I also think if we can retain more of our top athletes, then recruiters for professional leagues, for the national team, whoever, are no longer gonna be able to assume that the best players in North America are playing in the NCAA. So now if they have to pay more attention to U Sport, now we have more eyes on U Sport, more people getting looked at, more opportunities for other athletes. Like I think all in all it would be really good for U Sport. But I also think it's more I also think it's more complicated than that. Like yes, it is true that if we can offer scholarships to athletes that we maybe previously if they didn't have the grades couldn't offer scholarships to and that's wonderful. And yeah, I think that would be a factor for most people. But I think that's not the only factor. I think that the other thing that pulls athletes to the States is the quality of competition. You are far more likely, of course, to get recruited for a professional team or a national team if you are playing in the NCAA. And so I think like money aside, people want that exposure. They want to play at that level. And let's call a spade a spade. We don't have the population the United States has. The United States has 10 times, quite literally 10 times the amount of people that we have. When you have that many more people to pull from, your team is just going to be better. And there's really nothing we can do about that. The other problem is in like general support for sports. The reality is, and there's so many factors that go into this. Like number one, like I just mentioned population, they have 10 times the amount of people. But number two, they just have a way stronger of a following for their college sports. Like it must just be cultural that Americans are just more invested in college sports than we are. For example, there's a study that looked at uh, viewership, like network viewership for the football championship. And it compared the Vanier Cup, which is Canada's football championship game to the States' football final. 
And the Canadian version that was aired on Sportsnet had 308,000 viewers. And the American game had 30 million viewers. So the reality is like, there's just more support for sports in the States. People put more money into it, more people watch it. It's very cultural. Campuses get so passionate about their sport. Everybody wears their team colors. They all have their little like phrases and sayings and their like hand signals that they do. And so I think that like, yeah, again, being able to give more scholarships out because the requirements are lower is a good thing. But these regulations also didn't bring in more money. It's not like we now have more money to give away. It's the same amount of money between last year and this year. It's just that now we can give it to more people. So all in all, I think we have a long way to go if we're truly going to be competitive with the U.S. and keep athletes here. But I think this is a very good start for U Sport. I'm curious what you think. Is this unfair to the universities? Are we diluting academics? Are we turning it into more of a business the way that the United States works rather than student first, athlete second? I'd love to know what you think. Leave a comment. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about U Sport. Okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Stay tuned for part two. We're going to talk about... Gender balance, equal funding, okay.